Hello and welcome to Serpente Sunday for September 19th, 2021. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary, and this is our Angolan Python Radic. We are here to introduce you to this week's episode, which is going to be some suggestions that I have for ways that you might be able to encourage your shy snake to interact more both with you and with the environment in general. Let's talk a little bit about interaction. What's that look like? Well, interaction maybe isn't what you're picturing. Interaction can be one of many different things. You can interact with your snake by observing their behavior and not even intruding into their space or touching them or really not even letting them know that you're there at all. You can interact with your snake by photographing them or videoing them, by providing them just with routine care, by decorating their enclosure, by providing them with enrichment opportunities. You can interact with your snake through training, but I bet most of you, when you think interact with my snake, are thinking about handling. And handling is one way that you can interact with your snake. And I think everybody would love to be able to handle their snake and would love to think that their snake likes to be handled. But they're not really a type of animal that inherently likes interaction with others and is going to be particularly amenable to handling. Now, if you're lucky, your snake is tolerant of handling and doesn't mind it too much, like Radic here. He's relatively comfortable and relaxed with handling. He's learned to trust me. And part of that is because of the choice-based handling methods I've used to raise him since he arrived. I don't think there's anyone who wouldn't want a snake that's as enthusiastic to come out of their enclosure as Radic is here. And we would all be super happy if all of our snakes were as tolerant of handling and even enthusiastic about interacting with us as he is. Other snakes are genuinely curious and enthusiastic about interacting with their environment, but they may not be as enthusiastic about interacting directly with you. And that's okay. All of these are just different ways that you can interact with and enjoy having your snake. But what about if your snake hides all the time? Then they're not interacting with anything and it's hard for you to interact with them in any way, even by just observing them. Well, how can any of those things happen if your snake is hiding all the time? That's a great question and it's one that I've been getting a lot lately from viewers. So I decided to answer it in this episode of Serpente Sunday by giving you a couple of suggestions. You can, of course, encourage interaction through just passive habituation, setting your snake up in a well-traveled area of your home, giving them plenty of opportunities to see you and your family and the activities that go on, as well as plenty of opportunities to hide and get away from that activity. And then you can just give them time to acclimate on their own and start to decide that they wanna stay visible more and watch what's going on. You can speed that along a little bit by doing things like target training, setting up foraging exercises, or using puzzle feeding with your snake. We'd all love a snake that comes out as enthusiastically as TC does. And sometimes things like target training, foraging exercises, passive habituation, and puzzle feeding can help snakes gain confidence and start to come out on their own like Spike was doing in the previous video and like you see Drusilla doing here. Now Spike and Drusilla came to me when they were already adult snakes and had very little experience with things like training and habituation. It took Spike 18 months to learn to come out on his own and Drusilla learned to come out much sooner than that and now they both enthusiastically come out when the doors open for them. But if none of those things are working and your snake is still hiding all the time and choosing not to interact at all with their environment, you can encourage interaction by helping the snake realize that there are opportunities available and that it is safe for them to engage in those opportunities. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. And I'm going to show you an example of how I've used that with a couple of my very shy snakes. So in order to get extremely shy snakes or snakes that hide all the time to come out when you're there and to come out when you open the door like Drusilla is doing here, we first sometimes have to show them that that opportunity is available in the first place. Now this is a moon and he loves to sit in that cave. And so one of the things that I do in order to 
make him aware that there are opportunities outside of his enclosure is I will bring his whole cave out onto an exercise station and allow him to come out on his own if he wants to. I do the same thing with some of our other snakes. Here's an example of me doing that same thing with Fulcrum and look at where it got me. I brought Fulcrum out several times in his humid hide and I just set him next to my desk. And after only a few times of doing that, he slowly started to come out of his humid hide and explore the area around my office. Until one night, this is what he did. He came to his enclosure door and he wanted out. And now he has repeated this behavior several times and is starting to ask to come out on his own. Now here's an example of the whole process with our Central American boa nebula. Now, as you see, Nebula is in his humid hide. And one of the things that I do with very, very shy snakes or snakes who are not tame at all is I make sure that all of their hides have bottoms and are totally enclosed except for the hole that they use to get in and out of. This way, I'm able to lift the whole hide, whether it's a humid hide or a regular hide, out of the enclosure and move it if I need to clean. But I can also use this as an opportunity to show them that there are things available to them in the environment outside of their habitat that they might find reinforcing. And so what I've done here is I've lifted Nebula in his humid hide out of his enclosure and I've just set it in one of our exercise stations. Now I'm gonna just leave him alone and he is free to stay in his humid hide if he wants to, but he also has the freedom to come out of his humid hide and explore this exercise space if he chooses. Now, after just a few minutes, I came back to check on him and I found him with his head popped out of his humid hide. So he's already slightly investigating the environment that's around him. He's looking at things and he's tongue flicking from time to time. And that's a huge step. Now, I couldn't watch him for hours and hours. And so what I did is I took the whole humid hide with him in it and I moved it into an exercise tent. And this is a fully enclosed exercise tent that I can put him in with a few environmentally stimulating items, a few enrichment items, a few things for him to investigate and climb on, and I can seal it up and I can leave him and I don't have to constantly sit there and watch him. And so he can take as much time as he needs to to come out if he chooses. Now, he can choose to come out or not. He has the total choice and control to stay in his humid hide and not leave it and after a little bit, after either a few minutes or a few hours, I'll take him back to his enclosure. But he actually comes out and he starts to investigate after a while and this is a big step. I decided I would try to see if he could generalize his targeting behavior by doing a target training session in the exercise tent. He's very good at targeting within his enclosure and he has targeted out of his enclosure to shift onto an activity stand adjacent to his habitat three or four times when I've wanted to clean or change his water. So I thought I would see if he was confident enough to generalize this behavior in this exercise tent. Now, I had the target in front of him and I moved it to his left side. And that's because he moved slightly, just a little bit further out of his humid hide. And I took that as a sign that he was paying attention and he saw the target. So I decided to move it 90 degrees to see if I could get a directional change from him. And if you're watching his head very closely, you'll see that he is slowly starting to come out of the humid hide. And he did turn his head slightly to the left so that he could see the target. It's really important for the snakes to be able to generalize their training in different environments. This helps them build confidence and resilience. And it's important to me to help them through this process so that if their habitat is broken and they need to move into a new one, if something happens to me and they need to go to a new home, if we just move homes or if we have to evacuate for some reason, or if he has to go to the vet or temporarily stay at a shelter or in boarding while we're gone, it's important that he is confident enough that he can eat and move around in these different locations. I didn't want to push him too far though. So as soon as he came significantly out of his humid hide with the first third of his body, I went ahead and reinforced that. I was pleased with how well he did with this first session away from his habitat. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your continued interest in snake training and behavior. 
and in animal training behavior and welfare in general. Please remember to always be kind and love your animals.